Saw dudes. Today we'll be reviewing the Raid Exotic Conditional Finality, which is randomly awarded upon completion of the Root of Nightmares Raid that came with Lightfall. It took me 21 runs to get the shotgun with one Raid Triumph that raised a drop chance. Was it worth it? Yes, absolutely. This gun is not game breaking, but it is unique and most definitely strong. I doubt you'll be disappointed if you choose to use this as your exotic weapon. Even down to the sound design, this piece of gear is a masterpiece. Take a listen. I love hearing this thing fire. Let's talk about the general characteristics of the gun. This is a Doom style double barrel shotgun. For those who have played Warframe, think of the Tigress Prime without the duplex trigger. The stats page lists that the gun fires at 165 RPM, but I'd say it fires more at 60. The first of the two shots is stasis and the second is solar. The exotic trait Paraconsole Pellets states that landing nearly all stasis pellets will freeze targets, whereas landing nearly all solar pellets will ignite targets. Each shot fires 12 pellets, with the shape of the spread being a triangle for the first shot and a uniform circle for the second shot. In my testing, at least 10 of the 12 pellets need to strike the target to get them to freeze or ignite. However, this number is inconsistent. On some occasions, the target will freeze or ignite with 8 or 9 pellets, but this was extremely rare, and I can't replicate this consistently, but I would still keep it in mind. Also, if you manage to hit multiple enemies that split pellets, but add up to 10, both will experience the effects of the shot. So if you hit one enemy with 5 and his friend with another 5, both will either freeze or ignite. Conditional finality also comes with alloy mag, a perk that I don't see many others cover. This perk alone speeds up the reload by giving you a 0.85 reload duration multiplier, incentivizing you to shoot both shots every time. When it comes to surge, siphon, reserve, and holster mods, it's complicated and honestly highlights some of the problems with the build crafting system in the game, but I digress. Surges work depending on when an orb was picked up. For instance, if you have the gun fully loaded on the first stage shot and pick up an orb, then you will get the bonus in damage. The same applies to Solar Surge, you just need to have one shot in the mag. Regardless of what Surge mod you use, you will gain bonus damage on the pellets and Solar Ignitions. Stasis Shatter damage remains unaffected. The best Surge to use is Stasis Surge, as you just need to reload before picking up an orb instead of wasting a shot to get Solar. Siphon mods are a little more straightforward, with Solar Siphon being the way to go. After testing in Lost Sectors and bullying Carl and his friends, Solar Siphon spawns an orb off of one stasis kill and one solar kill, two solar kills, two ignition kills, and two stasis shot kills. However, the Shatter Explosion does not create orbs. Solar Siphon does not get affected by when the mod was equipped, so you should always use it when you want to use Conditional Finality to create orbs. Reserves are fairly easy too. The gun's base reserve sits at 18 shots. Reserves shots are based on what element type the gun was when they were equipped. Stasis reserves work when the gun is in stasis or fully loaded. This does not break upon death. Solar reserves work when they are equipped with one shot left in the mag, but unlike stasis reserves, this breaks on death, resulting in fewer total shots. One reserve mod increases the total shots to 20, two mods increase it to 21, and three reserve mods increase it to 22. To make the most of the weapon, I just use one stasis reserves mod to give your build some flexibility. As for holster and loader mods, the stasis versions work similarly to the reserve mods. Solar works when there is only one shot in the mag, but breaks upon dying, so your best bet is to use stasis. In my testing, it took about 3.3 seconds for one holster mod to fully reload conditional finality, and 2.8 for two and three holster mods, so you won't see a difference by equipping all three or just two. Loaders provided the best result at one copy of the mod, with no noticeable difference at two or three copies. On Coral at 1830 power, the stasis shot does 47,316 damage on a body shot and freezes. The follow-up solar shot does 49,680 damage for the 12 pellets, with an additional 11,392 damage from shattering Coral. The ignition from landing the 12 pellets adds another 42,717 damage on top. Mag dumping takes 1.08 seconds and results in 151,105 damage, making this one of the best special burst DPS options. If we factor in the aforementioned holster mods, we can make a true beast out of this weapon for sustained damage loadouts. After testing, the total amount of damage that Conditional Finality can put out without reserves is 1,359,945 damage, with one reserves mod that goes up to 1,511,050 damage. This is all without any damage buffs. This total damage, however, is not the same for bosses. 
Carl is not a raid boss and takes around 2.7 times more damage, so in a raid setting we will likely see around 620,000 damage as outlined by Xbox user123 on Reddit. Credit to his damage spreadsheet in the comments, he has done amazing work. Conditional finality is already fun with its perk, but the interesting stuff happens with the ability and subclass synergy. I'll list the abilities and subclass perks that synergize with the gun and put them on screen. Glacial Harvest for Warlock, Ice Flare Bolts for Warlock, Diamond Lance for Titan, Whisper of Chains, Whisper of Hedrons, and Whisper of Bond synergize with the Stasis Shot. Gunpowder Gamble for Hunters, Ember of Wonder, and Ember of Blistering synergize with a Solar Shot. Ember of Empyrean and Tempering work on both shots, which is a plus for some build flexibility. As for exotics, the only one that I have tested were Verity's Brow and Kefri's Horn. Kefri's only works with a Solar Shot and Ignitions, but Verity's Brow only works on a Solar subclass, but both shots proc its effect. I hope this video was helpful to you in some way, as I spent a lot of time doing research and testing for it. I will be releasing another video soon, which covers high-end DPS options, including this weapon and other staples. Thank you for watching.